He's my savior. I'm not raging. He's my shepherd. Where he leads me. I love Jesus. He loves me. Come on, help me. I love Jesus. He's my savior. Good evening, good evening. He's my shelter. Where he leads me. I will follow. I love Jesus. Come on, one more time. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. Come on and praise him, everybody. Where he leads. Come on and praise him. I love Jesus. Imagine this scenario. He loves me. You buy a little known cryptocurrency. I love Jesus. Lost my contact. But we're coming back. Where he leads me. I will follow. I love I love the Lord. 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 I Sister Stevens, Sister Buckingham, First Lady, Deacon Williams, God bless each of you. Won't take it back. So good, so good, so good, been so good, so good. So good, so good. How many know the Lord's been good? So good, so good. Well, the Lord has been good. Come on and bless his name. Oh, bless that wonderful name. Uh, come on, Kojic. No other name I know. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, no other name. I know Gee, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Well, no other power. In the name of Jesus. Well, God bless you tonight. We do bless the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. His name is above all other names there's none like him anywhere when you know the name of jesus you know how to get power you know how to get your touch you know how to get your blessing so we honor the lord tonight we're delighted to be in his presence god bless each of you certainly the lord has been good he has been good to us his people we appreciate each of you that are gathering and those that shall gather i pray that you've had a blessed day and that the lord has preserved you and kept you no matter what trouble might have come, surely we know the one who is able to deliver us out of all of our troubles. He is able to deliver us out of all of our stress, out of all of our issues. There is nothing too hard for our God. If you know there's nothing too hard for him, come on and give him a praise right now. Hallelujah. Nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. So we praise him and we bless him and we give him the glory. We ask the Lord to bless us this evening and to open our hearts and our minds. Dear Lord, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come for, before you with the word. We pray that you would anoint me, your servant, to speak that which you have placed in my heart and spirit, 
that you will guide my words, guide my tongue, that I might speak only that which I hear, that I might deliver to you, to your people, the things they should hear. I pray, Lord, that you would touch their hearts and minds, touch their ears that they can hear what they've not heard before, eyes to see what they haven't seen, O oh God, and that they will receive in their heart that which is needed for them in this last and evil day. These and many other blessings we ask in your name, we say thank God, thank God. and amen. Come on and amen. praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, church everywhere, give amen. God some amen. glory. Amen. Clap your hands, even at home, clap your amen. hands. On your job, clap your hands. In school, take a moment and clap your hands. Worse things happen on, in those places than clapping your hands. So even the people don't understand. You can get away with a hand clap in the library. Okay. Amen. They may look at you, but it will end so quick that it's too late to say anything. Hallelujah. You can give God your praise wherever you are. Amen. And the more we learn to praise him, the more blessed we become and the more gifted and more anointed we become because we take the moment, take the time to praise our God. We thank God for each of you and we honor you, the officers of our church, our elders and ministers, assistant pastor Gaston, to the mothers, the missionaries, to the first lady, of course, amen, and our church mother, Mother Mayo, God bless you. And all of you, the mothers in Zion, those that we don't even get to see that often, we know uh, many of you are uh, infirm or unable to get out or don't want to get out. Whatever the case may be, I thank you for joining us tonight. And I pray that the services, both the worship services, the Bible study, the prayers, all of our efforts are not in vain. I pray that you are receiving something, that you're being blessed. You ought to be blessed through the word. The word ought to help you, but you got to take some time, put some time in it. Yes. Put some time in it yes. and meet God on purpose. Amen. Don't meet God because you happened past the channel and you said, I'm going to stop and see what he's got to say. Don't meet God because you just happened to accidentally cruise by and there was something that caught your ear. You need to put yourself in a place yes. where you can receive from God. God allowed Moses to walk a long way and he ended up in the Sinai. He ended up at a place where he saw a bush. Uh, that was burning in the morning and came back through the lady in the day and it was still burning. And he said, I'm going to go over and see what kind of thing this is. The bush is still burning. And then he heard the voice of God saying, Moses, take off your shoes. Now God had a lot to tell him, but he wanted Moses to prepare himself before he delivered the word to him. In fact, uh, Moses noticed, but he didn't stop. And that's where a lot of people are. They notice there's a Bible study, but they don't stop. They notice there's a preacher on, but they don't stop. They notice that the bishop is on the air, but they don't stop. If you really want God, you got to stop what you're doing. Yes. Like Moses finally stopped to see. You want to hear from God, you got to meet him intentionally. Take time out. Stop something else you're doing. Give total attention just for a moment. Take the 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes during your break and give attention to the word of God. We want to make sure God knows we love him, we honor him, we respect him, and we don't take him for granted at all. What a mighty God we serve. And if indeed he is that great and that wonderful and that mighty, then he's worth the time it takes. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for those that are faithful to the morning prayer. Um, and I am yet recovering and I just don't have the energy uh, that I used to have. I, my normal agenda was to get up at 4 a.m., go to the gym, come back from the gym in an hour, amen, clean myself up, prepare myself, and then get ready for the 530 prayer, get dressed and get ready for the prayer to meet the Lord. But, now, since I had that COVID, my energy is not where it is. I'm still trying to get it together better than I was. So I'm not complaining. Yes. The Lord has been good to me. Amen. I'm not complaining. I'm explaining. Amen. So some of you were looking for me at 530. I was looking for me at 532. Amen. My spirit was willing like so many of you, but my flesh was weak. But we thank God for Pastor Aaron uh, filling in and stepping in and keeping the prayer because I need your prayers. Yes. I said, I need your prayers. Yes. Some people get so secretive when they're going through and they say, well, I, I, 
they sang that song that said, if I needed anything, I wouldn't tell nobody. Sometimes you need to tell somebody. The word says, confess your faults one to another. That doesn't mean I'm bad, I'm evil, I sinned last night. That means let them know what to pray for. Yes. Let them know what's going on in your life and that you trust the God that's in them, mm -hmm. that they can agree with you as touching anything yes. that pertains to our life on earth. And when they agree, Jesus said, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything, and you ask in my name, my father will do it for you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Let's give God a praise. Yes. So I ask you to pray for me. Yes. I ask you to keep me lifted. I ask you to keep me yes. uh, in this stage of growth and development where you say, Lord, keep him, Lord, encourage him, Lord, strengthen him, Lord, lift him higher. Bless my bishop, bless my pastor, bless the evangelists and teachers, bless our leaders, the presiding bishop, bless the saints everywhere. You don't know the name, just say the saints everywhere. Yeah. Amen. And if you want to pray for somebody and you don't think they're in the saint, saint category, just say, Lord, bless them. I don't know the name, but that man, that woman, that boy, that girl. Yes. Bless because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. God bless you. I'm so glad to see you. I hope you took a moment to greet one another. Amen. And to say hello to the saints. Yeah. I see more of you have come in and we're very excited that you are here. Our subject today, our lesson today, Ms. Amos, let me have that stand, please. Our lesson today uh, is coming out of the book of Romans chapter 10. No, the, the small stand. Romans chapter 10. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Wife informed me, Sister Lashara is on. God bless you, Lashara. We'll continue amen. to pray for you. Amen. The Lord continue to strengthen you and bring you through. Amen. What was a crisis. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus is able to take your crisis and all you have left is Christ. Amen. No Christ is. Yes. What you have is Christ is my healer. Christ is my deliverer. Yes. Christ is my answer to prayer. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes. And he will be just that for you when you're in your crisis. Remember, Christ is. Amen. And he will do just what you need him to do. Amen. I appreciate each of you. Others, I may not have called your name, but I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad the Lord is blessing you uh, and enabling you to join us. Now in the book of Romans, chapter 10, and also we're going to reference uh, Psalm 81, 6 through 16. Amen. And in the word of the Lord, Romans chapter 10, a very simple scripture, but it is powerful in its context. It is such a powerful promise because it has a word of commitment in it. It has a word that speaks to the future outcome of things. It twice uses the word shall. Mm -hmm. Somebody say shall. shall. It uses the word because with a shall, implies an immutable promise, a promise that cannot be broken. For the word says this to us, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call, he says, I will save you. Yes. Isn't that pretty powerful, pretty straightforward? Amen. Now, you have to take the word uh, at its point, at its purpose, and understand it as you read the word is saying, if you have the courage to call on the name of the Lord, the Lord has the courage to answer your call. That's right. If you dare say, Lord, help me, he dares to help you. In fact, when the word says whosoever, I'm excited about that word because that included me. So I take these verses, uh, scriptures and verses to be personal so that when I read it, I see if Jerry shall call on the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jerry shall be saved. That's right. Hallelujah. In fact, I translate name of the Lord. I know his name. Mm -hmm. How many of you know his name? Jesus. His name is Jesus. Yes. Somebody say his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. If you call your name, Janet, if you, Faye, if you, Stacy, if you, Hilda, if you, Lashara, if you, Stephen, Stefan, if you, uh, I'm trying to call your name, Rose, Dabadi, God bless you. If you call on the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. you shall be saved. But let's make sure we understand who we're calling. Yes. It's call his name, 
Because if you call his name, you'll get the one who has that name. Mm -hmm. You call a name so that the individual who bears a name will respond. You call a name so that you can specify who you want to respond to your call. And if you, Jerry, Billy, Stefan, Rosa, if you, Lashara, call on the name of the Lord, what is his name? Jesus. I thought you knew. His name is Jesus. Don't confuse it with any other name. Learn to get comfortable with the name. You just got saved. Get comfortable with the name. Jesus. Jesus. If you learn to call on the name of the Lord, if you le- learn to call on Jesus, mm-hmm. that's that's easier to say. It's more uh, consistent with our uh, culture and our language today. Call on Jesus. Mm-hmm. For whosoever, if you will call on Jesus, the outcome is you, whoever you are, shall be saved. Yes. Well, Pastor, I got saved. Uh, I got saved uh, January the 3rd. January 1st, New Year, I gave the Lord my life. I got saved in 1975. I got saved. But see, don't confuse that moment when you came to Christ and confessed him as your Savior, that moment when you made a commitment to the Lord uh, to give yourself to him, and you change your ways, and that's beautiful. It's a great experience. And you change your identity and declared that from henceforth you are saved Mm -hmm. and you were you are i I agree with you but that word saved means more than that moment you came to the church and confessed your sins your faults on the altar with the evangelist the missionary the pastor the teacher there is more to being saved than that salvation moment when you confessed christ yes you were saved when you confessed christ and so now you wonder well how does this apply to me? Because I've already already called on the name of the Lord and I'm already saved. Yes, you are. But saved is a continuous process. It not only means saving your soul and writing your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, it also means to rescue. It means to deliver. It means to get you out of trouble. And no matter how long you've been saved, you can still get in some trouble. Mm-hmm. No matter how long it's been since you came to the altar and said, save me, Jesus, save me, Jesus. And if you tear it and said, come on in, Lord, save me, Lord. Save. It doesn't matter how long ago that was, you will still have a problem. No matter how long ago it was, you can still have a burden, an issue, a crisis. You can still have trouble in your home, trouble in your life, financial issues, health woes. You can have interaction with family, trouble such as your children, your husband, your spouse, your wife. You can have trouble in your life boss not working right, people not treating you right, enemy seems to come from every side. What is it that you need? You say, well, I I just need him to rescue me. I need him to get me out of this. I I, I need him to take away my problem. I need him to give me an overwhelming deliverance. That means you need to be saved. I'm not talking about your soul. Your soul might be saved, but your circumstances might need a rescue. I often use the example of the extrication when you are in a terrible accident and that metal is wrapped around you and the, the vehicle is is just caught up all around you and you can't move, you can't get out. And the rescue team comes and they bring a tool they call the jaws of life, people call it, because it's able to cut through the door jam and it's, it's able to cut through the roof of a car. Why? Because they want to get you out. And you want to get out, don't you want to get out? You want to get out and and you can't wait till they can get you out. And even if you're hurting, you and they say, just don't move. You're going to cooperate because your rescuer said, don't move. And you're waiting on your rescue. And, and it may take a while and the sounds uh, might be frightening and the lights and all the noise of the team trying to deliver you, but you will tolerate whatever it takes to get you out. Now your leg may be broke and I got to put a splint on your leg. It's going to hurt. Do what you got to do because you're here to rescue me. Do what you got to do. You're here to turn my life around. And so to be saved can be mean, mean to be brought out of the condition that you're in. And somebody got, has a condition. Somebody has a need. Somebody has a problem. Somebody else has a burden. Somebody's going through and don't know how to come out. Mm -hmm. 
That's why the word says you need to be saved. Saved. Me. Somebody say, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Come on, save me, Lord. I'm save talking to the me, saints. Lord. Save me, Lord. I'm talking to the preachers, the save elders, the mothers, me, the missionaries, the bishops, the deacons. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me from this burden that I have. Save me from this save crisis. Me, yeah. Save me from the trouble. And you think you shouldn't get in trouble, but you will. That's why there's so many words written in the psalm and throughout the scripture. When the enemy comes uh, upon me, Oh, like a flood. Oh, Lord, lift me. Help me to lift up a standard against them. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. And writer so many times said, I called on the name of the Lord. I called on the Lord and he delivered me. I, I called on the Lord and he brought me out. And all you've got to do is call on the Lord. His name is Jesus. The greatest example given in calling on the Lord is found in Psalm 81. Mm-hmm. Psalm 81, and just skip down to verse six. It's speaking of when the Hebrew were in Egypt and the reason their time had come, not only was it prophesied, but God was listening. And he says in the sixth verse, I removed his shoulder from the burden. Mm-hmm. His hands were delivered from the pots. I took your load off of you because you were in trouble. I brought you deliverance. Thou callest in trouble and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Yes, when you got in trouble, you called. That's what you did last time. That's what you did when you were sincere and thought there was no other way out. That's what the Hebrew did. They began to call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he says, I delivered thee. He said, I answered you in a place where you didn't think you could get an answer. And I answered so loudly, it sounded like thunder. I proved you, I proved thee, I tested you, and I gave you a solution at the waters of Meribah. You remember when the waters were bitter? Mm-hmm. And the prophet threw in the branches and then told the people to drink. And this time when they drank, it was sweet. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. But you had to have faith to drink. Yes. I proved you. I tested you to see would you decide not to listen to the prophet. But you listened to the prophet. Hear my people, the Lord says, I'm going to testify unto you. Oh, Israel, if thou will hearken unto me, listen to the promise of God. If you listen to me, there shall no strange God be in thee. Oh, if you listen to me because you want that kind of deliverance, you want that kind of salvation, don't have any strange gods. You want God to hear you when you call on him? Get rid of the strange gods in your life. Get rid of anything that's not like him. Get so hungry for him that you do like the saints taught us to do. Put off everything that's not like him. Give up everything that comes against him. If it interrupts your mental flow, interrupts your spirit, if it interrupts your ability to worship and your ability to praise, you need to get rid of it because it becomes a strange God. And neither shalt thou worship any strange God. You want me to answer when I call? You want me to lift the burden off you? This is my testimony to you. You do this, I'll do that. (laughs) I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. That's a praise moment right there. If you open your mouth to call on me, I'm going to fill it up. If you call on me, I will change your testimony and give you a praise. Open your mouth wide. Watch me feel it. But... Verse 11, my people would not hearken. Mm-hmm. Oh my, Psalms 81, 11. I told them to call on me, but they didn't listen to me. And Israel didn't want to have anything to do with me. What a time in which we live, raised in the church, taught to call on the name of the Lord, taught how to pray, taught how to petition God, taught how to fast, taught how to get in a hurry for God. Come on, Jesus, need you now. Lord, rescue me. Lord, bring me out. Lord, open my door. You got to open your mouth and do this. No, you want to come to church and hear the saints pray. 
You want to come to church and have somebody pray over you want to go, but you got to learn to pray for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. In the day in which we live, you got to open your mouth wide and let God fill it. He said, but my people wouldn't even do it. So what I do, I gave them up unto their own hearts lust. They wouldn't call on me. So I let them go do what they wanted to do. You wonder how people can walk away from the church, walk away from their training, walk away from what God has told them is right and wonder how on earth, because you stayed and it's hard to imagine when you have embraced the love of God and see others who have that opportunity and see them walk. You wonder how on earth could they do that? He said, I had to let them go because I'm not going to force anybody to receive my blessing. I gave them up. But listen to God's plea, verses 13 through 16. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Oh, if they'd only listen. And you have said that yourself, if I had only listened to my mama, no, no, if right. I had only listened to the preacher, oh, yeah. if I had only obeyed what God told me to do. And God himself says, oh, if my people had listened to me and if Israel had walked in my ways, you wouldn't be in the trouble you're in if you had walked in the way God told you. You wouldn't be in the situation you're in if you had hearkened unto the Lord and obeyed everything he told you to do. Now, don't argue with me. It, it, that's just the way it is. And it's the way of human nature. It's the way it was then, it's the way it is now. Some people have the condition they're on and you can't pray it off of them. Why? Because God said, I turned them over and I gave them up to their own lust. They wanted to do it, they wanted to have their own way. I'm gonna let them have their own way. Because all they had to do was call on me. Yeah. In fact, verse 14, he says, I should soon have subdued their enemies. By now, he's saying, I would have brought them out of their trouble. Mm -hmm. By now, I would have delivered them from their crisis. By now, they wouldn't have the problem they got. But you know why they're still in it? They wouldn't call on me. They wouldn't call on me. They didn't desire to have me in their hearts. And they walked. And some of you are in trouble and you're trying to learn how to get back to God. Call on the name of the Lord. You want to know how to be restored? Call on the name of the Lord. You want to know how to get peace in your life? Call on the name of the Lord. He says, yeah, I would have done it a long time ago. In fact, the haters of the Lord, they should have submitted themselves to me by now. You that mad at the church, <laughs> you should have been over it a long time ago. Amen. You that mad at holiness because it was too tight for you. You should have gotten over that a long time ago. All that stuff they talk. I'm just mad. I don't want to see another church. You should have been over that. Should have. Because all you had to do was call on the name of the Lord and he would give you understanding. Call on the name of the Lord, he would have given you some peace. Call on the name of the Lord, he might have shared with you his long-term plan. But no, because you wouldn't, he let you go. Mm -hmm. But if you want to come back. <laughs> oh, Amos, you're preaching up in here today. Yes, you if are. you want to come back, call on the oh. name of the Lord. Yeah. Back verse 16. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. That issue you got could have been over with. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're hungry spiritually, you would have been fed by now. But no, you left the teachings of righteousness to go to every wind of doctrine. You left what you knew and have been trained in and go to every wind of doctrine. There's so many people out here, they, they tell me, well, you know, I, I grew up in an old time church and it ruined me. I grew up in an old time church. It marked me. It's supposed to mark you. Amen. It's like your mama when she whooped you back in the day when they could whoop you. Mm -hmm. And you would look at your leg, Mom, I got a mark on my leg. It's supposed to be there. I wanted you to have a reminder. Now you put a mark, you know, they want to take you to jail. But if the child calls and you get took to jail, then they have to take the child to jail too. God said, you could have been delivered by now. You could have been brought out by now. You haters of the Lord. Haters of the way of the Lord. Haters of the church can't stand that preaching. I don't know why they got to do it that way. Why don't they just write it and send me the letter? I don't want to be in church all that time. I just hate it when they get up. Look like the preacher won't quit talking. He just keep on talking. Just give me the word and let me go. You come to change. You came. You can't do it now. Came to church with an attitude. Mad. Said, I would have brought you out a long time ago. But their time should have endured forever. So you have not submitted to me. Mm -hmm. So the haters of the Lord should have submitted to him and their time would have been over. He would have fed them with the finest and with honey out of the rock, 
should I have satisfied thee? So God says, look, understand why you may be in the situation you're in. Understand why you may have the problem and deal with it. Be honest. It's me. Yeah. It's me. Because I'm going to tell you now, no matter what you say about God, no matter what you say about Christ and his church, it's not the church. It's you. It's you. I said, no, you don't know the church. It's not the church. It's you. It doesn't matter what church you're in. It's not the church. It's you. Because if you had the right word in you, you would have had spiritual understanding of whatever the issues were. And you would have grown through it all and moved on and grown up and been the one that would have the testimony that says he brought me out. But God said, I left you in there a lot longer than you should have been. But finally, somebody say finally. Finally. He doesn't leave you forever. There is a way out. There is a way to deliverance. There is a way to healing. No matter who you are now, even though you were Hebrew and you had a chance, even though you were Jewish and you had a chance, grew up in the church, you had a chance, went to BTU, Bible study, Sunshine Band, YPWW in the children's choir, you had a chance and you left it. But guess what? He now reminds us that the Romans feel like, well, you know, we, we, we love Jesus, but we don't have that rich history. We don't have that history of being brought across the Red Sea. We don't have that history of 40 years near about in the wilderness. We don't have that history of manna falling from heaven. And Paul writes and says to them this, don't worry about where you've been. Mm -hmm. Even don't worry about your past. What the psalmist wrote was true. You may be where you are because you put yourself there. But the word of God never leaves you without a way out. Never leaves you without a door to come back to the place that you left behind. Because of this, whosoever shall call. <laughs> mm -hmm upon the name of the lord you didn't call when you should have but it's not too late, not too late. i'm loving this hallelujah yeah. oh you didn't God. pray when you should have but it's not too late it's not too late you didn't say help me lord when you should have but it's not too late say with me it's not too late not too late in the day that you hear my voice harden not your heart that means it's not too late you ought to be like saul Saul had done so much wickedness towards the church. In fact, when he was on that road to Damascus, he was going to lead a prayer group into captivity mm -hmm. because they were praying and calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. But he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Yes, oh, thank you, Jesus. And he said to Saul, 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 why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? that I persecute. And the answer was, I am Jesus. Mm. Now, the moment he heard the voice say, I am Jesus, you know what he said? He said, Lord, what would you have for me to do? Yeah. What would you have for me to do? The Lord told him what to do, going down into the city and you're going to find a man and go inquire about him go to his house his name is ananias and he's going to pray for you and you're going to be all right mm. and the word later records this history saul was saved calling on the name of the lord yeah. if god can save a saul he can save you yes he can because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank shall you. be saved. I want to challenge you today. I want you to have faith in the preacher today. I want you to have faith in this word that right there, right now, you can call on the name of the Lord. And, and I know what people have said in this day, which I, it's not, it's in my heart. It's in my heart. It's as long as it's in my heart, it's my spirit. It's no, it may be in your heart, but this you need to get in your mouth. Because the word is nigh thee. 
even in your mouth. It is the word of faith that I'm preaching to you now. Yes, it's got to be a part of your heart, but you got to open your mouth and say something. There's no salvation without a confession. And you need to say it out loud. Oh, I know. Who's listening? Who's listening? But if it saves your life, doesn't matter who's listening. Amen. If it brings you out of the trouble you're in, doesn't matter who's listening. If it restores your relationship with God, doesn't matter who's listening. If it brings you out of a crisis, even though you are connected to God, if it yet is able to turn your situation around, doesn't even matter yeah. who's listening. I challenge you to call on the name of the Lord. Say with me, Jesus. Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Jesus. Jesus. Rescue me now. Rescue me now. Jesus. Jesus. Bring me out of the wreckage. Bring me out of the wreckage. That I find myself in. That I find myself and in. And I'm gonna praise you because your word says. I'm gonna praise you because your word says. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. And Bishop Amos said. Bishop Amos said. That means if I call the name Jesus. If I call the name Jesus. Jesus will rescue me. Jesus will rescue me. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Fix it. Hallelujah. Fix it. Jesus. Jesus. Lead me. Lead me. Jesus. Jesus. Guide me. God. Now, if you believe it, give him a praise. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank, thank, you. You, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we thank serve. You, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One of those songs says, just ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Yeah. He is willing to save you. Jesus will carry you through. And I believe without a doubt Thank that you. you have received it today. Oh, oh, Hallelujah. And Jesus is going to bring Thank you through. Yes. Uh, yes, Thank I know we've got so many new worship songs and praises. But sometimes it's the simple ones like, save me, save me, Lord. Uh -huh. Save me, save me, Lord. And even as a child, I used to wonder how the saints going to get happy and shout and dance and praise God on this song with just a few words. Save me, save me, Lord. Save me, save me, Lord. Save me. Save me. And the saints would just, to me, it seemed like hours. It probably was 10 minutes, maybe 20. But it just seemed like hours of saying the same thing. Save me, save me, Lord. But then when I grew up, just like some of you, when you grew up, mm -hmm. you recognized there was yeah. something you need to be saved from. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't always sin, mm -hmm. but it was conditions, yes, yes. burdens, crises. And now I understand. I don't need to tell him all the details because he already knows. But I want him to know that my heart's desire is to be saved. Yes. Yeah. My heart's desire is to have the burden lifted off my shoulder like he said he did for the Hebrew when they were in Egypt, uh, to take the pots out of my hands. Get me out of this labor job. Get me out of this mediocre income, slave wage. Get me out of the pots and pans. That represents that you were working for the slave master. Get the pots and pans out of my life. Save me, save me, Lord. Save me, save me, Lord. Save me. And the saints would sing and then tears would roll and the Boy, praise would come and they would shout the victory before it was over. Yeah. Because they knew that he's going to do just what you ask. Mm. You know why they knew that? Because they trusted the word of God in Romans chapter 10 and 13. Yes. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, if you know that's the case and you trust it, don't worry, just wait. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord to fix it. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord to turn it around. Trust him that he will and just wait for him to do what he said he would do. For the Lord has promised and his word is true. His word is yea and not nay. His word, his answer is yea 
and not nay. God bless you. I trust you've received this today, and we thank God. Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the blessing. We thank you for those who have heard it, received it, and called on your name. We thank you for a reminder that we need to express ourselves openly, fearlessly, calling on the name of the Lord, because in your name we find peace, healing, and deliverance. In your name we find the answer to all of our problems, and we say yes to your will, yes to your way. Yes, Lord, all day. Yes, Lord. And we give you glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. Well, we thank God for you. We thank God for his blessing. We thank God for the doors that he's opened, the ways that he's made. We thank God for the things that he has done. And I believe God has great things in store for you. God bless you. I want you to prepare yourself for the offering service, everyone. Take a moment and give uh, to the Lord. Amen. Give and let us be seen giving. And the reason I asked you to say I gave, that's the equivalent of bringing the Lord an offering. They brought an offering publicly in the days of the Lord, and we do it today still in the church. I know people want to say, well, I give. I, I don't want people to know I give. You ought to want people to know it's supposed to be seen. Your piety, your religious tradition, your faithfulness ought to be revealed. It may not be necessary to tell how much, but even then, Jesus was close enough to the offering to be able to say the woman gave two pence. He was able to see what she put in, but he recognized she had given all that she had, and he said she's given more than all. We want you to give today, and don't be ashamed to give. Trust God in your giving and watch God bless you for doing so. Some of you give regularly on this night. This may be your time that you've committed to bring the Lord your tithe. But whatever you do, do it now as unto the Lord. Amen. Come on and bring the Lord your gifts. Sorry. Thank God for you, each of you. Bring the Lord your gifts. Yes. Amen. Bring the Lord your gifts. Thank you so much for the faithful that present there. Some of you mail yours in. I thank God for you. I appreciate that. Thank you, our deacons, our elders, our ministers. We need you to give. Praise God, because this word is for you and to you, designed to bless you and to help you. Thank you, Sister Buckingham. Amen. Yes. Give. Thank you, Deacon Luther. Amen. We ask all of you to give. We're bringing the Lord our offering. I don't care if the world knows that we're giving. I give. I want you to give. Amen. I put mine in last night. Amen. I want you to make your offering unto the Lord. Amen. Because giving is a part of our relationship. Thank you, Sister Hilda. She said snail mail. Amen. Mother Gaston, thank you so much. Amen. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. I'm sorry, we don't, maybe silent shall be saved whoever calls on the name of the lord mm -hmm. shall be saved preachers mothers evangelists missionaries sisters brothers long in the lord short in the lord just got saved yesterday been saved for 40 years doesn't matter it's whosoever whoever will call on the lord whoever will bless the lord whoever will give the lord their life amen whoever will give god their best thank you sister lashara amen Amen. Are you out of the hospital yet? Amen. You texting like you uh, are delivered, like you home, like you set free. Amen. Praise God. I know she was uh, still on oxygen not too long ago. Amen. Sister's been near death, critically ill with COVID, a young woman, but God has raised her up. Praise leader. She told me, she said, Pastor, uh, I may sound like a tenor now, but I'll be back alto after a while. Hallelujah. She was intubated for quite a long time. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God. He turned it around. He turned yes, he it. He turned it. <laughs> Our God is able. Thank There's you. nothing too hard for God. Yes. So we appreciate what God is doing. Amen. God bless her mother who stood by her day and night and her family, her brothers also. We appreciate all of you and all of the saints who've been going through and all of you who have 
then in crisis, our God is able. Yes. Amen. Sometimes you just got to push your way through. It's the day in which we live. Amen. And we're going to keep on doing. So, so Sheila, God bless you. Everyone that can, bless you, Mother Webb. Amen. Let the Lord know that you are a worshiper and that you trust him and you will call on the name of the Lord. Amen. We're taking our gifts, receiving our offerings right now for our church. We have a wonderful church. Amen. And we're going to take care of what God has given us. We're going to thank God for it. Amen. Sister says she's still at Parkview, but close to going home. Let's praise God for that testimony. She's in the hospital still, but close to going home. Amen. God bless you, Missionary Ross. Missionary Bertie Ross is all the way from Morton, Mississippi, but she supports our services. Thank you so much, Evangelist Ross. Amen. Yes, our God is a healer. Amen. He's, he is a healer. If you want to see a living testimony, amen, wait till the shower get back to church. Lord, uh, we may have to put seat belts on her. Wait till she get back to church, Sister Amen. Right. Amen. You know, when God has done something for you, you owe him a great praise, don't you? You owe him to magnify him and to lift him up. Amen. And I know God is going to do just that for you. We're calling on the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for your support, for your gifts. Amen. Thank you for uh, trusting God. Amen. And all that you do. We honor you and we appreciate you. Amen. We are uh, going to ask you to keep praying for me. Keep praying for my home and my family. Amen. We believe God is going to bless in a mighty way. Thank you again. We honor you and thank you for your giving. We praise God for his blessings in your life. And we believe God is doing great things for you. Lord is going to do it. He's going to heal us. He's going to deliver us. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the worship tonight. We thank you for the people of God. Thank you for your word, for leading us into the text to remind us we should only call on the name of the Lord. And his name is Jesus. So we say thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Watch over us and keep us. Preserve us as we go out and as we come in. Let us meet when time allows. But preserve us through the cold, through the winter, through the storm, through the bitterness of the weather, but Lord, also through the situations from which we need saving. And we give you the glory, honor, and the praise. And we say thank you for all things. And we look to give you praise the more. In Jesus' name, we say thank God and amen. God bless you. Remember, his word for you is amen and amen. God bless you. See you soon.